Venerable, I want to ask a question on diet, that is a vegetarian diet. How important is it for our behavior? Because I was told if you eat meat, you'll be fierce as a tiger. If you eat grass, you'll be tame like a buffalo. So how important is diet for our behavior and our, what you call, understanding? <laughs> so many things in your question. <laughs> Do you know Devadatta, who tried to kill the Buddha, <laughs> was a vegetarian? <laughs> Hitler in Germany, who killed nearly three million Jews, was a vegetarian. <laughs> the Buddha and Jesus, both of them have made one statement. I mentioned this in one of my publications. Purity and impurity in our mind never take place just because the things go through the mouth into our body. But the thing come out from our mouth create all these things. <laughs> Uh, this is the Buddhist attitude. But today people have realized vegetarians maintain healthy life. I know very well, for four years I spent in northern India with uh, Hindus. They are pure vegetarian for thousands of years. And all these modern sicknesses that people are facing today, they have never heard. They are free because they lead normal life, they eat normal food, they follow according to nature, they are free. So, it is true. If we keep away from uh, flesh, take natural food, you can have a pure mind also, no guilty feeling in your mind. But, by taking what we eat from the religious point of view, we cannot say the person is pure religious or not. With the vegetarians or not, if the mind is pure or dirty or ugly, it is up to individual. No, the Buddha has never given this advice to the monks should not eat meat or fish. Devadatta came and asked the Buddha, why not to introduce the monks to lead a vegetarian life? Eat only vegetable food. The Buddha says it is unfair. Because their way of life at that time, not like today, they had to go out with their arms bowl from house to house. Whatever people have prepared in their houses, they come and offer. They cannot choose, oh, we cannot eat this, we cannot eat that. They must have that freedom to eat what they receive, but they never order. I want chicken, I want pork, I want beef. <laughs> there are three principles. Ah, this is very reasonable. If a monk comes to know that this chicken is slaughtered for him, Buddha said, better not to take that. If you suspect this person has killed this chicken for him, he should not expect. If you have listened from another person, I know that person killed this chicken for you, should not accept. Ah, that is purity of the mind. Uh, here you can understand how liberal this Buddhist way of life. Otherwise, when I went to Mongolia to attend a conference, you know, certain period, no vegetable at all. They eat only meat and bread. So there are many delegates who have come from certain countries, pure vegetarian. What did they offer as food? one big piece of meat like a bricks <laughs> and with a knife and bread. No vegetable. 
all those vegetarians had to suffer. Now we can understand why Buddha did not introduce such law that you should not eat. Supposing those who live only eating fish, what do you call them? No, not fishermen. <laughs> only fish. The, the name I forgot. What do you call them? There's nothing else, only fish they eat. They survive only by eating fish. What do you call them? Eskimo. Eskimo. Uh, if Eskimo become vegetarian, <laughs> can they practice Buddhism? <laughs> uh, that is why Buddha did not introduce that kind of law. It is up to individual. If you think it is nice and decent, okay, go ahead, no problem. But don't force others not to eat.